CTV News, Vancouver Island Report. Good evening. Thanks for being here. We begin tonight in Ladysmith, where a family has been struggling to provide around-the-clock support for their special needs son. And they say their pleas for help have been ignored by Community Living BC. This in the wake of the major shakeup at CLBC, the firing of its CEO, and a pledge from the province to make things right. The family says that pledge must not have included them because they were repeatedly denied care until CTV News stepped in. Stephen Andrew has their story. Just weeks away from his 22nd birthday, Daryl Holzman needs 24-hour care. That's it. Simple tasks such as emptying a dishwasher requires constant supervision. Uh, Daryl lives with autism and he has a mental handicap and a physical handicap. He's quite a happy boy. He's very large, over 300 pounds. And because of health and safety reasons, he needs 24 hours care. It's your turn. I'll spin. Spin. It's care that has been provided by family members, but recently his grandmother, the primary caregiver, became ill and was unable to care for Daryl. The family says for two years it has been looking for help from CLBC, Community Living BC. When we first went to them in 2009, we were looking into group homes, but um, as we were told recently, all the group homes are being closed, so we were... Um, told about home sharing, which is the wave of the future, where Daryl would go and stay in another home and live with them and become an independent adult. Those aren't Cheerios, there's monsters. Last week, the family was denied help with no reason for the denial. Living paycheck to paycheck, including a mortgage on their new home, the family explained to the CLBC caseworker the stress, financially and emotionally, could break up the family. Bobby Jo Marshall says she was shocked by what the CLBC caseworker said next. So I explained to them my situation, that our jobs were in jeopardy, and in jeopardy of losing our homes, ultimately, if we had no jobs. And uh, my, the caseworker told us that is exactly what was expected of us, to be able to may qualify. I was to lose my job, lose my home, move to an apartment, then they may look at us. And when I stressed to her the, the stresses that that would put on our whole family and my marriage, she said if my husband was to leave me, I could look at it that as a kind of loophole in the system and I could go on welfare, the government would pay me to stay home with Daryl during the day and there would never be a work expectation put on me and I was horrified at those options. We asked the interim CEO of CLBC what he thought of the comment. If those words were actually said uh, by our staff, I would be concerned. I'll be asking the Director of Regional Operations on Vancouver Island to be in contact with the family, to listen to them and to understand what occurred uh, from their perspective and to take appropriate action. CTV News began asking questions about Darrell's case early this morning. By early afternoon, the Marshall family received news they had been looking for for two years. And they have changed their no to a yes and Darrell now qualifies for home share funding. CLBC says its decision to reevaluate had nothing to do with our story. No, it was a regular meeting of our staff and the decision was made based on our understanding of the family circumstances. The Marshall family isn't so sure and says its fight's not over. It will now turn its attention to helping other families in similar situations. Stephen Andrew, CTV News, Victoria.